Joining me now in studio is someone who has been uh, defied the skeptics in saying that this government would be formed and would last, Jeremy Salton, political advisor for Naftali Bennett's Yamina party and director of its English operations. Thanks for joining us, Jeremy. Well, you made it 100 days. Uh, just we should note a couple of hours ago, the government releasing a sort of program for the next hundred days and uh, maybe talk a little about that. Yeah, I mean, isn't it exciting to have a government where all the ministers actually have a plan in terms of what they actually plan on doing, where they're setting actual objectives in terms of what they want to be able to accomplish, where you have a prime minister who's actually involved in each ministry and each minister's goals and making sure that it comes together as part of one coherent plan. I mean, this is a beautiful thing, and I, I would like to hope that this is something that is going to be a first that we're going to see in many generations to come. Right. Now, of course, in order to do all of those things, the government has to last more than 100 days. And the key to doing that, first and foremost, is passing a state budget on November 4th, because in Israel, if you don't pass a budget, your government, your coalition collapses. Uh, is the government going to be able to get through that budget on time? Yeah, I'm very confident about that. Look, we've already passed what I believe are a majority of the big hurdles. We passed it in the cabinet, all of the senior ministers, all of the party leaders supporting that. We passed it in the first reading in the Knesset, where that's usually the time in which you'd have a lot of people want to come out and already let us know ahead of time which topics they're going to be spending the next couple months focusing their issues on. Also, we're able to split very successfully the arrangements bill into the different committees in terms of where each thing is going to be discussed. Based on all of these developments, I really feel that we will be in a good position once it comes to November and we'll be able to pass it. Right. We've right. for sure gone a lot further than anyone else has in the last three years in terms of passing a budget. That's true. But the arrangements, uh, we should explain the arrangements bill and some of the details of that. And that's usually, the devil is usually in those details. But Jeremy, the skeptics say the coalition, despite that it's lasted 100 days, still is dependent on just a, a razor thin one seat majority uh, there in the parliament. We'll just take one rebel to bring down this government. Uh, how concerned does that have to be that in those last days toward going to the budget that make that that could be a danger? We've seen many Israeli governments with just 61 last way longer than people expected, starting with Rabin's first term in the 1970s. We saw that with Netanyahu from 2015 until 2016 when Lieberman joined and expanded that coalition. Again, that was just six years ago. I believe after we pass this budget, which really is our big test, as you've mentioned, I feel confident we'll pass this budget. Then we might even see an enlargement of the current coalition that'll move us away from this current position of having that narrow 61 majority. But so far, if you are also looking at the accomplishments, and we have been able to do a lot of things in 100 days that I don't think necessarily a majority of Israeli prime ministers have been able to do in such a quick amount of time, then I do believe that once we're able to expand that coalition, we'll be able to do a whole lot more. Right. Now, uh, of course, you talk about things the government's done, and it, I guess the main thing is that it's it faced, been faced with, it's reacted to a series of crises, which could have brought down the government, uh, this unrest in Gaza, uh, the COVID situation, avoiding a lockdown, all of those things that were covered, some of the diplomatic uh, moves that uh, Prime Minister Bennett has, said, has made. But what some critics of this coalition say, yes, it can react to the get through each crisis, but it can't initiate any big decisions because of the makeup of the coalition. For example, a major diplomatic move, if there should be a major military operation in Gaza, if it has to make a decision on, for example, a hostage exchange for the uh, civilians and the soldiers uh, the, uh, in, in Gaza, will it be able to make the make those moves. What we've seen so far, and again in a very short period of time, is Prime Minister Bennett having these key meetings with, of course, President Biden, but also with, of course, the Egyptian president, Assisi, and of course, King Abdullah of Jordan. You have three very important strategic relationships. The content and everything that went on over there is stuff that was supported wall to wall from both the right and left segments of this coalition when it came to responding 
to what was going on in Gaza. We've been able to do that time and time again. Going back to the beginning, the birth of this coalition, where in the first few days, we went forward with the, of course, flag parade, which was something that, of course, on the left, and of course, Mansour Abbas's ROM party was not happy about. So we've shown time and time again, when it comes to the security of Israel, we are able to go ahead and move forward without any political considerations. And in terms of diplomacy, we're also showing that Bennett is specifically the right man at the right time in the right place to take Israel forward when it comes to these very important questions that we're dealing with, whether it's with Iran or other elements that, of course, are hitting us on the northern border or on our south. Right. Uh, very briefly, if the budget is passed and this government is moving forward, what do you see happening in the opposition, specifically the Likud? Uh, look, uh, we, we've said this uh, for a long time that uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu is very much serving as a glue for our current coalition. It's up to uh, the uh, opposition leader Netanyahu to decide how much longer he wants to be spending that time uh, being, you know, that glue for this coalition. Perhaps he'll decide to leave. We'll see a very interesting race in Likud. Or perhaps he'll decide to go ahead and stick this out. Of course, he is the democratically elected leader of the Likud, and he might decide to just ride this out for the whole term. Right. And we'll just see a whole lot of what we've seen the first 100 days. All right, well, we'll see what happens in the next 100 days. Jeremy Salton, thank you for that. Thank you.